In this episode of Mind Pump, the world's top fitness, health, and entertainment podcast, we answer fitness and health questions that are asked by listeners and viewers just like you. Now, the way we open the episode is we talk about current events, we mention studies, we talk about fitness, we talk about our sponsors. After that portion, we get into answering the questions. So the intro portion today lasted about 39 minutes. Let me give you the rundown of the whole episode. We open up by talking about old school fathers, how uh, little they did around the house, uh, <laughs> yeah. much less than, than they do now. Right. Uh, we talked about the federal judge whose family got attacked. Uh, this is making the conspiracy theorists' heads explode because she was working it's on- right in front of us. The Epstein case. That's kind of crazy. Then we talk about Spotify and how they're dominating the premium paid for uh, streaming music market. Uh, then we talked about a letter one of our, uh, our, fo- our listeners sent us they used the full spectrum hemp oil extract uh, for their son, and it seemed to help him out quite a bit. Now Ned makes the best CBD uh, and other cannabinoid hemp oil extracts. These are full spectrum. It's got all the cannabinoids in there, minus the THC, so it is fully legal. It's very effective. It's third party tested, and if you want to get a mind pump discount, this is what you should do. Go to helloned.com. That's H E L L O N E D.com forward slash mind pump. Enter the code mind pump. You'll get a full 15% off. Then we talked about the difference between heritage pork and regular pork. I love the flavor much more of heritage pork. Delicious. Now you can get heritage pork and grass fed meats delivered to your door by signing up with Butcher Box. Butcher Box. Make sends the best meats to your door. You don't have to go to the grocery store. It's a really, really good price because you eliminate a lot of the middlemen. Um, and because you listen to Mind Pump, you get a pretty good hookup. Go check out the deals you get because you listen to our podcast. Go to butcherbox.com forward slash Mind Pump. Then we talked about Google and Fitbit. And then we talked about firearm sales. Then we got into answering the questions. The first fitness question What are some of your favorite landmine attachment exercises? The next question, can you discuss when supersets are appropriate and when they are not? The third question, what's the one thing from the 90s fitness era that you wish was still around? And the final question, this one got heated. It was a good time. It's at the end of the episode if you want to fast forward and listen to it. Uh, Will with, With schools getting ready to go back, how do you each feel about sending your kids back to school? Will you or won't you? Now, we're here in California. Some people call it California. Yeah. Schools are not Accurate. being reopened. Thanks, Gavin Newsom. Yeah. So we had some heated uh, some heated discussion there. Make sure you check <laughs> I, that I out. I kind of lost it a little bit. Also, this month, uh, one of our best workout programs for muscle building, for building the posterior chain, the, the back, the butt, the hamstrings, one of the best ex- uh, exercise programs we have for different exercises. It's got traditional barbell and dumbbell movements, but it also has some non-traditional ones that are strongman inspired. This program is Map Strong, and it's 50% off. Huge sale. Here's how you get the discount for that program. Go to mapsstrong.com. That's M-A-P-S-S-T-R-O-N-G.com and use the code STRONG50. That's S-T-R-O-N-G-5-0, no space, for the discount. And it's t-shirt time. Oh, shit, Adam. It's my favorite time of the week. Cool. <laughs> Woo. Oh, hey, shit. the roles oh. reversed. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right, we have three big winners this week. Two for Apple Podcasts, one for Facebook. For Apple Podcasts, the winners are J-List, one, Anon37942. For Facebook, Josh Lemons. All of you are winners in the name I just read, to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com, include your shirt size and your shipping address, and we'll get that shirt right out to you. Hey, dude, are you are you getting good at golf? <laughs> I saw you. Post- uh, uh, I'm playing golf. Yeah. How okay. about that? <laughs> How about that? Nobody ever gets good you're, at you're golf. You're wearing the clothes. For hey, it. I will say this, though. I hated that sport up until becoming a dad. Yeah, I really did. <laughs> why do you think, who do you think he hey, actually plays and no, why I, they play? Wait a I get it. Why? I, I get it now. Yeah, I got to hear why yeah, though. Yeah. Because, because, and I don't want to sell out any dads right now or any that, that have wives that are list, that listen to Mind Pump. Yeah, but yeah. Plug your ears. Yeah. Wives don't know exactly how long 18 holes takes. And this is like a secret <laughs> dad code <laughs> Yeah, that, that all dads are just like, listen. It can it, take however long you it's want. It's an all day event. Yeah. It's like an like, all day event. And you, and you intentionally make sure it takes all day, right? Yeah. So 
I appreciate that the solitude for like yeah. you know straight five hours. You know that's go what, away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's what's making me fall in love with it. Although I will say this, you know, this was funny too. So uh, we we get to the 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 twelfth hole, and we you know all of a sudden here come uh, our w- wives show up. Right, actually Katrina didn't show up. My two buddies wives show up and they come out and like meet us on the golf course and uh i was like enjoying hey. yourself well yeah it, 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 <laughs> it, it, did, it did feel like that they come walking over carrying their kids you know what i'm saying oh, no. yeah they're carrying the kids and they come walking over oh, and they're yeah. like the, you know this one and this one and they're talking about what like what what a headache they've been for the it's day it's been like five hours yeah yeah it's been about four about that time <laughs> you know we still got we still got six holes to go and uh, and it's twilight, so anybody that's uh, golfed like uh, twilight, they give you like half price on weekdays, right? So it's Friday, and we're it's doing... also glitter vampires. But no, it's the left yeah. right there. Yeah. Yeah. And it's uh, so what they do is they cram like everybody in. So you and you got somebody in front of you, you got somebody behind you. So there's no like can't stop and hang out with the wives for 20 minutes on the golf course. Yeah, Just, you, you have to hurry up and do the other four hours. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, you know, the, right after that, we'd seen them, you know, we said, ah, we gotta go, there's someone pushing up behind us, so we, we take off, and and then that stemmed the, the conversation of this, like, you know, uh, feeling guilty. I'm like, man, this kind of kills the game now. I feel like you guys are feeling... Oh, because you guys left your wives yeah, to yeah. take care of the Well, kids. and they, and you could tell, you could tell by their wives, like, how they felt, you know, that mm-hmm. they were like, it's been a long time, you know, yeah. your, your daughter, your son's being a pain in the ass right now. When are you going to be done? Mm-hmm. You know, we haven't ate yet. When's dinner? Like, all that stuff. And so I was telling them just like how, what a, what a pain in the ass. I was like, that's kind of sucks because now you feel guilty for us being out here and golfing. And so each guy's going around and th- th- this has to be common dad stuff like, you know, Who's who's got who's got it more made? Like who does less of the stuff they have to do? Who gets a, who gets away with more? What like a weird as, way to brag! Yeah. Oh yeah, it I, wasn't. I, a, I do I do the least at home. It wasn't a way of bragging. It was more like who who has the the ability to go play a full round of golf and not get shit for it afterwards. Right, 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 That's right. really what it was. What it was really about. Right. And and the two of them watching whose wife quietly resents their husband. Yeah. Versus, <laughs> yeah. versus being vocal about it, pushes and suppresses it way down. <laughs> yeah. And then and explodes yeah, way later yeah, yeah. about it. it causes yeah. a divorce 15 years yeah, exactly. later. Exactly. You know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Bro, the the role of the father in terms of raising kids has changed so much in the last couple generations. Like oh. my my dad has he he doesn't know what to do. He has no idea oh, listen to what this. to do with I it. tried watching my dad like uh, uh you know change diapers. That was an experience. Yeah. He was just fumbling all over the place. I was like, you never did this, did you? I know. No, do you guys remember never. when that came to so my two this this actually was a conversation that that stemmed all this, right? We were first talking about ourselves and like how we contribute and mm-hmm. how what care what how much of the load do we carry with raising our kids and you know, they both were saying like it's so crazy how different it is like what we're expected to do as fathers in comparison to what our dads, he, both my buddies said, like, I had no idea that my dads didn't do shit until we had our kids. Yeah. Because <laughs> once we had our kids and we brought them over, yeah. he's like, I, you know, you think you're going to come see grandpa. Like, oh, I get a little bit of a breather. I can, you know, my my dad, my gra- my dad's going to be playing with my son. Wow. I can relax, maybe watch a little bit of TV for a little bit. Like, no, like no attention to him. Doesn't know how to change a diaper. Mm-hmm. Doesn't know how to heat up milk. Gives him ice cream and puts him in front of the TV. <laughs> They're like, like, what the? They're what? Like, well, yeah, like, are you serious right now? Like, yeah. did, did you not raise me, bro? My dad. When, <laughs> when, when my when me? when my the few times my dad was left alone with us when we were real little. Of course, as we got older, it's different. But I'm talking about like when your babies and stuff like that, right? My dad was clueless. The few times my mom did that, where she would go to her mom's house, which is down the street, my dad would call her, and he'd call her up and be like, "Hey, um, uh, the baby pooped." So my mom would have to come home. <laughs> And you think I'm joking? This is so I don't, bro, I'm my, laughing because that's how it was. So this is before cell phones, right? One time my mom went to the store, and my dad was home alone, and it was like an hour. But in my, you know, my brother had just gone to the bathroom. My mom changed the diaper. She's like, "It's safe. Let me t- let me take off." Well, I guess he wasn't done yet, right? So he takes another crap or whatever. 
my sister taught my dad had to put the because my sister had dolls. So yeah. she's like, no, that's wrong, Papa. That's backwards. And so she's helping him <laughs> out. And it's like a funny story. Yeah, you think it's bad, dude. Uh, you know, talk about and on top of it, Southern like old school Southern Italians is even. Yeah. Now, granted, that doesn't mean they did nothing. They, you know, in the tradition, it was that they worked, right? They were, but they didn't do anything yeah. or know anything else to the point where my ex wife's dad. Did not know where his clothes were. He didn't know. Mm. He would wake up. In, he would wake up in the morning, and if the clothes weren't put out in the bed for him, he'd come down in his underwear, and he'd be like, "And you just be in his what underwear." What am I supposed to do? <laughs> no, no idea. Yeah. He just if he didn't get, he just you just be in his underwear. Wow. I don't know where my clothes are. Yeah. Where's my pants? Just helpless. I have ah! no, no idea what to do. Now, do you ever? Did you got? Have you guys ever? Do you ever get those moments of feeling a little bit guilty like that when you realize like your partner's picked up so much of the slack in an area? You're like, oh shit! Like I don't actually know what well, I'm supposed to I'm, do. Right I'm here. a way different. Ma- mainly with scheduling. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's I am like, oh, where am I? Yeah, you know, I, all the time. I, I yeah, just, I'd agree with that. I, I lean like, like I have like I ask Katrina sometimes, where am I supposed to be this weekend, or where are we? Yeah. Like, so I, I do idea. think that there's some general male and female traits, and that that's why we can be good partners. And I think one of the things that guys tend to be bad at is that I think we're really we probably are worse at multitasking remembering and scheduling stuff like that mm-hmm. uh, and, and I don't know if that's a man thing or if that's just the way I don't know but it's a common it's a common complaint yeah, and it's mainly and I feel bad because it's mainly like every time we schedule something with like family or people's birthdays or this or that I'm just like that's like a whole nother world to me and I'm just like in this like I gotta work and provide and do this and that and the other but, oh yeah we have this birthday what you yeah. know, this throws me way off. The worst is there. This ever happened to you? Where like this happens to me with Jessica all the time. I feel so embarrassed, but I'll be, I'll be talking to her and I'll be like, um, "So Saturday, you know, I wanted to do this thing, whatever." And she'll be like, <sighs> "Yeah," and I'll be like, "What?" And I know I'm like I'm fucked. I'm like, yeah. oh man, you know we're going bed at death and beyond. Yeah, I'll be like, "What?" And she'll be like, "I literally just talked to you three hours ago about what we're doing Saturday," <laughs> and then I'll, and then. I think she thinks she's going to spark the memory in me, but I'll still be like, oh man, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can I get, hey, really can I get one more clue? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> can I get one more clue? I'll be clue? like, honey, I swear I don't. <laughs> Tell I, me what I have to wear. Like, how many people me. are going to be there? At least give me that. I don't remember. And it's like something important. Like yeah, it's my yeah. mom's birthday. Yeah. Like, is it oh, indoors? Is it outdoor? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll be like, oh yeah, that's right. You did tell me an hour ago. I don't know what we're yeah, supposed yeah. to do. You know? You no, know, it's, it is funny. But you know, like my dad now, um, the, the, here's another funny thing too. How, how different are your parents as grandparents versus how they were as parents? How much more patient are they as oh, grandparents? Oh, now, I patient. think that has a lot to do with just getting older and wiser. Yeah, because mm-hmm. don't you feel like you're a, a way more patient father today than For 20, sure. Right? For sure. Because I think that this, that's the same yeah, thing. They I, still complain a lot. I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like man, the the old has really set in, <laughs> you know. But I'm like, is it set in or has it always been there? And I just now notice it more. I think that part of it is you're wiser, and part of it is you're too tired yeah. to get super angry. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. But when I was, I mean, I see my, my when my kid was little, he's. I remember my dad was, you know, my mom's like, try and feed him this thing, and she's <clears throat> trying to do the thing, and my son like just smacks him in the face. Yeah. And I remember like, oh no, what's gonna happen? And he laughed. I was like, who's this man yeah. <laughs> who's laughing that a kid hit him in the face? It's not the same man that raised me. Yeah, it was funny. I was actually, so I vacationed a bit with my parents over the weekend in, in San Diego. And uh, it, I mean, even though I go visit them all the time, it's like when you hang out like overnight and in the morning and all this, you see all these like patterns that you forgot all about, you know, and the way that they interact and stuff is pretty funny. But uh, my dad was like, made this big ordeal to try and take my boys in the morning to go to to the donut shop. And he's just like this. Yeah. Like he's always trying to like find that like, oh, yeah, your father never let you do this. So let's do this, guys. (laughs) You know, like always trying to undermine me and everything. And I I was so I was so proud. My my kids were just like, no, we, we don't want we don't want all that sugar. Uh, he didn't know what to do. His mind like exploded. You know, yeah. like he's telling me this. He's like, "Well, you've definitely programmed your kids." <laughs> you know, I'm like, "What do you mean?" He's like, "I tried to get them to eat donuts this morning. They said no." Yeah. I'm like, "Yeah, well, you, you did That's, do a good job." Yeah, yeah. my Take kids, that. my kids would have folded like a like a sheet. <laughs> you know well, I mean? they had it the night. Before. I mean, dude, the I mean the the past few days of them vacation. Yeah. Meanwhile, Justin doesn't desserts all all all. He's the on the other the side nights. of the room going like this. 
Yeah. Yeah. Give, give him the dad look. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah you just go, go get donuts, you guys. They were yeah. feeling the heat from me in the other yeah. room, yeah. and I wasn't even there. It's, what do you like more, you donuts or, or your bike? Yeah. Yeah. Which uh, one do you like yeah, more? Yeah, yeah. Dude, but so I, we were like, we went to Coronado, and we, went, and we were there, and, and I was like trying to come up with something to do, because apparently it was all on me to like figure something out to do with everybody. <laughs> and I'm like, you don't like doing anything. You know, what am I supposed to do? And so I found this bike rental thing where we could all like fit in like one of those like tandem bikes things oh, where it's yeah, like yeah. a little oh, like a four so six people like, oh wow yeah so like we were all packed in this thing right and there's one there's one part of the thing like on, on the left side you have the control so you actually have the brake and you have the steering ability and, and pedal and it's like the person that does the most work or whatever right and so my dad's like six seven i mean i i hate to throw him on blast but he's close to 300 pounds i mean he's a heavy dude mm-hmm. right yeah. He's Nate and his knees are bothering him. He's, you know, he's tall. And so he can't really pedal. And so he just decides, ah, I'm just not going to pedal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you're fucking dead weight. <laughs> yeah, right. And I am pushing as hard as I can. I would, dude, we went three miles. <laughs> And you were the engine. And I was the only one pedaling. <laughs> that sucks. I was so exhausted. It, like I was like, <laughs> I was done, dude. I passed out what when did we you, got did back. He, did he put his legs up or what? He just put him up on this like wheel well, like in front. He's <laughs> just like there, just like <sighs> you know. Yeah, this like, is nice. He's like, this is great. Yeah, you know, you, you can't say shit. Courtney's to him, trying to help me. She's like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. You know? <laughs> <laughs> my mom's like trying to help as much as she could, but I wasn't doing anything. But you can't say shit. I've been carrying yeah. you for yeah. for decades. I'm like, can we get <laughs> about can we, time can we you carry? This guy out, you know what I mean? Like, kick him on the curl. You walk back, dude. That's hilarious. Oh, so dude. Mad. Hey, my kid turned 15 this weekend. Oh, this is I didn't know that oh. was a yeah, this yeah. weekend. That's why I got him the BMX. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. 15 years old. He's reaching the age now that I clearly, clearly remember being. You know what I mean? Like, if you think back, uh, to when a you good were point. Kid, like, yeah, I have vivid uh, memories of 15. Yeah, right? 15, right around 14, 15 is when I have a pretty clear memory of like my thought patterns and who I. So now I'm looking at my kid and I'm like, I know. You know what I mean? I know what it's like to be 15. <laughs> but uh, he, 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 he bailed for the first time on the on the bike the other day. Dude. Oh, he did. What, yeah. what was he going for? He was, was he jumping. So I get. Yeah, I gave him the. You know, he got the BMX and he's been riding around the, having a good time. The bunny hop lessons he's, he's from pra- Brad. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> he's practicing or whatever, and uh, he, we were going for a long walk, and he was he would lead it in front of us, and uh, we pass by this church, and they have a parking lot or whatever. So he takes off in front of us. So it takes us about I don't know seven eight minutes to catch up to him. When we catch up to him. He's riding toward us, and I think he wanted to show off. And apparently, he'd already done this a bunch of times, so he's trying to show off in front of us. And he was trying to bunny hop over a curb, but he didn't time it well and just head over over the handlebars. No, dude. he endowed. Hard, dude. Oh. Yeah, face in the dirt. Hey, you know? I mean, that's that's all part of it. You got to earn your stripes. But I'm, you know, and, and Jessica freaked out, of course, and I, I kind of real calm. I walk over there and I'm looking at him, and I saw his leg, and I'm like, oh crap, did he break his? But he was totally fine. Nothing. He just uh, now how did now how did it affect him though? Was he like yeah. cool about it, and like, or is he like scared of the bike now? No, I think he thinks it's cool that he fell. Oh, okay, yeah, like yeah. oh yeah, you know, like I got this like scratch. Yeah, on my now face. he's got a story. Yeah. 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 yeah, now he can show the girl he facetimes or whatever. You know, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. Oh, he's trying some big jump. You notice that yeah, thing on my face? Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. jumped yeah. over a few he told, know, fire pits. He told his mom a lie though, because I go to drop him off at his mom's house, and so his face is kind of scuffed right here, whatever. And so, and him and I are pretty good. We're a pretty good team when we're bullshitting because we can keep a straight face and just riff off each other. <laughs> yeah. It's a really nice bonding time. Yeah. So he shows up. <laughs> this is time I said to be a good liar. Oh, right? it's so good. <laughs> oh, it's and great. His mom's like, "Oh my god, what happened to your face?" And he's like, oh, and he makes his face, and he goes, uh, "He goes, this this homeless guy was trying to steal my bike." She's like, shut up. And I'm like, no, I didn't want to tell you. And so, like, we're going back and forth, over, you know, with each other. He's like, he grabbed the bike and he pushed me off. And then I grabbed the bike back. And he's like, luckily, Papa showed up and the dude ran away. And we're telling a story for like 10 minutes. <laughs> and she's just like, oh, man, we got to move. What the fuck? I can't believe we get out of this <laughs> place. Move. This is terrible. This is horrible. And then, yeah, we both start laughing and she's, you know, pissed off or whatever. Uh, yeah. Anyway, classic. It's, yeah, it's, it's a good time. Dude. Uh, you ready for some more conspiracy <laughs> stuff? Oh, oh my. yeah! We should Please, like God, are you serious, this. you guys? No, so, this is. We're gonna turn our podcast yeah. into the conspiracy hey, man, podcast. I've been avoiding it all weekend, so I'm I'm ready for, for some fresh ideas. Listen, yeah. okay, this is the best. Listen, time. Linda, this is the best time in my life for conspiracy it, theories. It everything really is. is so weird that everything is believable. But here's the thing. Yeah, this is not a crazy one. This actually happened. You guys ready for this? Let's hear it. Mm. So a 
federal judge, Judge Salas, was assigned four days ago to unravel all of the money laundering in the Epstein case. Okay? Yeah, I did hear about so that. So she was this female judge, and she was assigned to, to unravel all of this, right? Hundreds of millions of dollars worth of, with banks, suspects, the whole black book, the whole deal. Yeah. Okay. Yesterday, this is sad. Yesterday, a gunman shows up at her house dressed like a like FedEx. a UPS or FedEx guy mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah. Her husband and her kid open the door. Gunman opens fire. The husband is in critical condition. I think- I think the son died. I think the kid died. The yeah. son died. Yeah. What the fuck? And, and he, okay, here's the other thing. This, Straight what's, mafia okay, style. Okay, wait a Now, how's that? A, this is nothing conspiracy about that. That's no, right. that's what happened. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So how crazy is that, right? And then here's the other part. Today, so as of the recording of this podcast, the suspect who shot them was just found with a self-inflicted gunshot wound, so they committed suicide. What? Dude, this is getting crazy. Dude. That is crazy. There's nothing... Okay, that's not a conspiracy, bro. That's no. like shit. Well, what I, what I mean that's, by that... Well, it's not being uh, publicized as much like in the media. Like, they're not... Yeah, uh, I didn't know that. I yeah, didn't see, not, not, like, I didn't see no... I didn't see any news. Well, right. here's the conspiracy theory, okay? The conspiracy theory is that it's the reason why this happened is because she's investigating or she's part of the judge that's what doing What do you mean? Of case. course it is. Wow. How yeah. else could it... Is, someone yeah. gets in a FedEx... Okay, that's like straight hitman. It's blatant. That's not like a, oh, I was going to rob the house, wrong person, answer the door, so I shot him. And then That's like a send a message thing. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's Wow. That's what I think. But here's the thing. Federal, this type, judges like this are involved in a lot of cases that could, you know, like she, I think pres she was presided over a case that dealt with like this organized crime syndicate and a bunch of other stuff. So technically, these judges are, you know, they've always got to kind of be careful. Mm. But it is weird that she's involved in the Epstein thing and then this happened. You know, four days after she got this, this th that this was the thing she was supposed to. That's so crazy. And so she's still presiding over this case. I don't know. Because that's, I mean, wouldn't you think like you'd have more vested interest Dude. in presiding? I mean, again, like what does that do in, in terms of like it becoming like uh, like grounds for it, it being like one of those where, where they have to like retry? I don't know, dude. You know, the, you know. I read that the <laughs> that uh, Gilsane Maxwell, who's obviously the, the Epstein's girlfriend, or whatever, they are moving her from cell to yeah, cell I heard that. to avoid assassins. Yeah, that's what the freaking headline said. I know. I saw. I saw the, all the, the. I'm like, this the, is a the, real the thing. The memes that are going around. About I that. know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that they're admitting it. <laughs> that there's, there was an assassin. Well, it's like, yeah, I get. And I, and I get why people like tongue in cheek will keep like joking about us, but that's that's the serious shit. Like that's what everybody needs to be paying attention to and keep her, you know, alive so she can talk about like all these people involved with this bullshit. I, Look I, into her family, by the I way. I mean, I told you guys off air that if if she gets killed, bro, and we don't fucking protest and yeah. make a big stink about it, I'm disappointed in our country. Yeah, like, that's hundred percent. That is. Something. You can protest about everything else under the sun, like like let's save some kid lives. Yeah, that's yeah. that's insane. Yeah. To me, well, did you see her family? What her dad was involved in? No, I heard you guys talking about it. But, oh, he was you know, a huge. I, wasn't, I don't he's get suckered in. He's in Mossad, I guess. Well, huge twisted media. Mo he was a mo media mogul in, in the UK, connected to all these different people. Also accused of, uh, you know, lots of other conspiracies and stuff like that's his daughter. Um, so, and some people are saying that she was the brains behind the whole thing, and Epstein was just the the, the money, yeah, you know, and stuff behind it. What? It's it's crazy. It's crazy. I mean, it's just baffling to me. It's like so blatant. It's in everybody's face, dude. So, you know what this kind of reminds me of is uh, in the in the eighties. Uh, so, so you know, obviously, my family's from Sicily, right? And Sicily's had uh, you know, mafia comes from Sicily, organized crime or whatever. Well, it was really it's it's and it's still a big problem over there. But in the eighties, there was a judge that he's like he went out of his way and he's like I'm taking the mafia down. Uh, I think his name was Judge Falcone. Maybe Doug can look look it up. So I want to get this I get this right. So he was getting people and then he was getting them to talk and it was the first time in a long time that the Sicilian mafia actually felt threatened in Sicily. And something had happened. I think there was some innocent kid that got killed or something mm. and the public protested. And they were like, take these people down, which this is the first time that, that they'd really seen a big public outcry. So they yeah. were like, uh-oh, we're, we're whatever, you know, they're going to come after us. So this judge was under serious, like, government protection. They would switch several cars when he was driving. He'd have all these guards. Um, what's his name? Yep, Judge Falcone. So he was, 
he was, you know, super protected, under arm guard. They were protecting him because obviously they knew that they would try to kill this judge, right? Mm -hmm. Do you know how they got to him? How? They they blew up a bridge that he was that his whole convoy was driving over. A whole bridge. What? Blew it up and they ended up oh killing him. Oh my god. How? That's crazy. That's... Yeah, that's a true story. That's uh it's in the it was in the eighties that happen. Isn't that isn't that insane? That is crazy. Yeah, that's wild stuff. <laughs> Yeah, wild stuff. Anyway. Well, now you got my cackles all up again, too. I know. I know. We have a good time. Dude, uh, uh, Spotify. Adam, I got to talk to you about Spotify. Yes. I got to admit on the podcast here for a second, you were totally right, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I know that. I know that. Another timestamp right here. I know. I know. I know that's, that. that's the second time in five years. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> At least. This Two guy. times. This Two. guy. No, you know what happened? So when uh, Rogan went to Spotify, Spotify stock shot up. And it was all it was expensive, and Adam's like, "We need to buy Spotify." I'm like, "I don't know, man. It's it's real yeah, expensive. Like it's kind of at its peak." Yeah, let's just leave us forget it for a bit, whatever. No, it keeps shooting up. Ugh. So I'm reading about uh, about Spotify. So you know, obviously, st streaming now has become the preferred way of listening to music. Mm -hmm. It's a 11 billion dollar industry, making up 47 percent of global music industry revenues. <laughs> And Spotify is the clear winner globally in terms of paid subscribers. Wow, it's number one. They had the best. They had the best platform. For yeah, sure. they've they've dominated the global streaming music industry with about ready for this, a hundred and thirty million premium subscribers worldwide. Wow, hundred and thirty right times now. nine dollars. Yeah, that's massive. I yeah. wonder how much business they've taken from Apple. Paid paid business, they're crushing. Yeah, right. Because the other platforms have a lot of free stuff. Yeah, but they're the ones that are they're they're winning this right now. Yeah, they're just taking over. Man. This is good news for well, for not podcasts. And stuff. Well, I mean, not only it's that, fun that, to watch. If we, we re if we really believe, I think so. I mean, Joe Rogan was the first, but I think we're going to see more and more of this in the next three to five years, where these platforms start acquiring, uh, you know, famous people. You know, mm. big people shows. That, yeah, big, big yeah. Because right now, they, they, I mean, what's cool is that, I mean, to me, I love this. I think it's just so neat, the time that we live in, that mm -hmm. how easy it is to, to get into this market. There's Everybody listening right now could go start their own YouTube channel, start their own Very podcast. low barrier. Yeah, very, very low. Very, very minimal cost to get up and running and doing that. And I think that's amazing and awesome. And if you actually have something that is provides great value and you build an audience, you can build a nice livelihood for yourself. And then you even have the opportunity to build such a great livelihood that you get the attention of Spotify, Apple, or YouTube, and they go, listen, this person has got <clears throat> so much influence. Mm -hmm. We want to pay for them to exclusively be on our platform. I mean, that's what I think we're going to see in the future. And Joe Rogan was the first and obvious. Once that pans out for Spotify, you're going to see it happen. Like right mm -hmm. now, it's kind of a gamble, right? Yeah, like, you, are we going to get our, our Yeah, return? right, are we going to get a return? We're paying this guy millions of dollars. Like, are we going to see, you know, a spike in more mm -hmm. uh, subscribers? Are we going to see more traffic coming through there? Like, And then once that pans out, then it's just a mathematical game. Then you just go, okay, well, Joe Rogan's this big and draws this much attention. Well, how big is this person and this mm -hmm. person? And it's Yeah, it takes the maverick business to, to, to pull those strings, and then everybody else watches from afar. Totally. And they're like, ooh, is this going to work out for them or not? And then it works out, they're like, oh, we got to get in this. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, I mean, the, the, the beauty of, uh, of new media is the bandwidth is uh, essentially unlimited, right? It's a huge bandwidth, whereas before – if you wanted to, uh, you know, if you had some kind of, if you had an idea for a radio show or a show of some sort and you wanted to be in media, there were a few networks. There were, there really wasn't much to pick from and you had to do what they told you and the, the cost it to enter that kind of a market was so high because equipment was expensive, mm -hmm. cameras and recording equipment, and then where do I put it? No one's going to listen to it unless it's on a network. And so the barriers were just massive. Now the barriers are so, so low, and there's unlimited bandwidth. And here's the beauty of that. In the past, if you had a show that got uh, you know a million or two million listens every month, that still wasn't even close to big enough to get on the one on one of the main main networks. It just wasn't. right. Today, you have a show that's got a million, two million, you know listens. Um, you could go on whatever platform you want because anybody can. And that's enough to produce. A, a seven-figure business, yeah, yeah, livelihood for yourself. You, you could build a wonderful business off right. of off of that. That's mm -hmm. like, and the the other part that I love so much is it's it's so free. I mean, this is one of the reasons why we liked it so much. Uh, you know, a lot of people, are, a lot of our listeners are, are haven't don't know the original 
like our origin story or whatever. But you know, when we first started podcasting, we knew a lot of the stuff that we were going to say about the fitness industry would would never get us on a a big fitness platform because it was so counter mm -hmm. to the fitness space. Well, especially in the fitness space, when one of the number one uh, sponsors for shows or anything would be supplements, supplements you right? Know? And, that's and most of them are bogus. Yeah, and they're going to be like, "There's no way they're going to let somebody like us come out there." And that the whole time <laughs> they talk shit about it. <laughs> yeah, it's yes. like, yeah, they're not going to be motivated. It would have never worked. Yeah, uh, but we were able to because you know we could say whatever we want. Um, and you know, luckily, you know, we did it at the right time. Yeah. This wouldn't existed, you know, 15 yeah. years ago. Okay. Now we have cool sponsors. Hunters like Butcher Box and Ned that are yeah. badass. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, yes. Marijuana. <laughs> Have you guys gotten DMs? I got a DM from this guy I was talking about, his son, who has really benefited from using Ned CBD. Uh, and he's a, he's a bit on the spectrum, but he's high functioning. But he said it's been, really been helping him out. And I, I, I'm wondering if there's studies like that with- There are. Uh, there are, really. Yeah, there's studies on cannabinoids and uh, ADD, um, the high functioning autism, other behavioral disorders. Mm -hmm. um, because, and they think it's because of the way the cannabinoids affect the neurotransmitters in the brain. Mm. So the, the and I'm going to get a little nerdy on this, but the-, the Ooh, I like it when you get nerdy. The, uh, CBD and other cannabinoids, um, they act on the endocannabinoid system. And the endocannabinoid system is kind of like a, it's like a light dimmer switch. So what it does is it's, it's like a regulator. So imagine you walk into a room and the light is too bright or it's too dark, right? You could walk over and adjust the dimmer to make it just perfect. Well, this is kind of <laughs> loosely how a lot of these cannabinoids work. So if you're if some things are firing too hard, too strong, if you have an imbalance or whatever, it almost acts like a balancer um, in the body. And, and this is why it's got the anti-inflammatory effects that it has or the anxiolytic, you know, the anti... So here's here's a good example, right? So um, if you used like, uh, like really, really good hemp oil extract, right? Like we're talking about Ned. So it's really, really good. It's got a lot of good uh, cannabinoids, third-party tested, no THC. If you take that, it's this, uh, it's this interesting paradigm where you... It, it relaxes you, but you don't get drowsy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Pharmaceuticals that are anxiolytic that you take to help with anxiety, they tend to make you drowsy. Mm. Like if you take Xanax, um, you, you might not be a good idea to drive or to uh, be at a meeting or something like that. Right. Cannabinoids can relax people but also help them with focus. It can relax people but not make them sleepy. And it's again, it's not. It's because it's not like a big hammer. It's kind of like a, a you know a dimmer. I like that analogy that you give because this is also what explains why you know it's one of those things that everybody feels like you know the the big joke is like oh yeah marijuana helps everything, but because no, that's right. so the, that system is so abundant in your body that oh. it can it can there's a lot of things that it can kind of dim up or down right or or li change it a little bit. It's not going to shut something down or block it or stop it. But it can actually relieve a lot of different areas that you could be possibly potentially having problems. Yeah. With. So, like with inflammation, because I'll get a lot of messages from people who are like, "Hey, I'm I'm using the hemp oil, and I was using it for anxiety, but I also noticed my joints are less stiff. Like, how is it anti-inflammatory? It's not anti-inflammatory like uh, ibuprofen mm -hmm. or Aleve, where that literally shuts down the production of certain, you know, uh, signal signals in the body that produce inflammation. Like if you take a lot of Advil all the time, you'll definitely have less inflammation, but you also mess with the signaling system of inflammation, which is also important for things like muscle growth, tissue regeneration. This is why when people take lots of NSAIDs for joint issues over time, the joint actually gets worse over time because you need some inflammation. So the way cannabinoids uh, work with inflammation is it doesn't shut it off. It, it helps regulate it so that it's at a healthier level. So it's not going to block it and cause those potential negatives. It's going to regulate it so it's a bit more of a healthy inflammatory response, which is the good. It's a good thing because you can use it and not negatively impair like joint health over time or yeah. or muscle growth and stuff like that, which. Inflammation is a big, you know, it's a big part of it. That's um, great. You mentioned butcher box, dude. Uh, heritage pork versus regular pork. I will never eat regular pork again. The, Why? Ta the taste. Oh yeah. I am not a pork fan, mm. but heritage pork tastes so much. I mean, do you guys get the pork chops? I don't get them. You, you're the big yeah, one on that. I'm, I'm more on the, the the burger and steak side of of like the red meats uh, that they offer. But yeah, I've I've tried it once. And I liked it. Try, it, dude. You got to try it. I, I saw Doug eating them for lunch. What did you think, Doug? Yeah, they're great. It's, How are you making them? 
Just pan fry them. Yeah. Basically. Yeah, yeah, that's what Jessica does. She puts them in a cast iron and mm-hmm. then sears both sides and then puts them in the oven. And that's it. And she has this butter thing that she puts on it. But it's heritage pork, it's the flavor. And they it, they eat differently. They feed the pigs differently. I was gonna say, what is the what is the difference? I remember you broke it you broke it down one time on the podcast, and I don't remember what the major difference it's was. It's the feed that they give them. It's also I believe that has to do with the breed of pig, but the meat it tastes so much uh I don't know how to explain. It's almost like it's sweeter and richer Mm. so it's just a much better flavor that's interesting to me because you know one of the things about grass-fed beef the beef side is that it's not quite as uh, flavorful because it's not as the meat's not as fatty right Mm -hmm. so that's uh, one thing i always remind people like when you when you eat leaner yeah it's leaner when you eat grass-fed if you like like a real marbly ribeye and you've had that at some restaurant and then you try to compare that to grass-fed steak it's just it's not going to compare because Mm -hmm. it's unbelievably way more fattier than the grass fed, so it's interesting that you say that the the heritage pork has a better taste to it. You mm-hmm. would think that it would have a similar type of an effect, where it would be less fatty than regular pork would be, and so it would lose some of the flavor. But maybe because pork is so fatty already, I think this is naturally. Yeah. This is naturally fatty. Yeah. You know, because there's a night the, the pork chops have a nice layer of like delicious. You know, I'm I'm a big fan of fat, right? Yeah, it, it, it oh, tastes yeah. really good. Hey, I found out why um, Google, why they're having issues with Google buying uh, Fitbit. Did I t- say this already? Did no. I tell you guys? No, no, no. I told you. I brought up. I know the, that stock hasn't moved. Well, so. <laughs> I, yeah, I know it hasn't. I brought up la- okay, last year they bought, and that was part of why I was excited for us but to invest. But they're being reviewed, in, right? right? Yes, and that's been under review for almost a year now. Mm-hmm. What is the deal? So uh, uh, Google owns- I'm so glad you found this. Google owns, uh, let me see, a their parent company, Alphabet, um, owns two pharmaceutical companies, or they've launched two pharmaceutical companies within the last- Six years. Uh, so one is Calico, and the other one is I can't. I don't know what the other. Oh, Genentech. I think no. I, I know Calico is one of them. I don't know what the other one is. But they they own uh, some big pharma companies. So I think the fear is that they have all this data on you, plus the the watch mm. that or the Fitbit, excuse me, that measures all of your you know heart rate and. You know, you're all kinds of you're basically so that's data int- on. So I know I get what I get where you're going with this, but why? It's such a weird, weird. Yeah. And what about Apple? I mean, they have the whole health kit and everything else where they're collecting all your health data. Yeah, but does yeah, Apple but do they own have pharma a pharma company? Co- yeah, they don't have pharma mm, companies. I'm sure that out. The, well, yeah, I don't know. About so that. is that is that is that considered a conflict of interest, or is it like the ability to monopolize something? Is that well, I don't understand what the what, I, what is the problem? With I don't that? know, but my hunch is that it has to do with uh, them then advertising pharmaceutical drugs to people based off of the measurements or targeting them mm. would my, would be my hunch. Mm-hmm. That would be my guess. But I think that's the issue. That's the reason why they're they're looking at them and So I wonder what's going to sure. happen. I don't know. I mean, if they if that goes through um, cuz isn't Europe waiting? Aren't they the ones that are waiting? Yeah. yeah. I feel like the Fitbit stock then will take off, but right now it's I mean, I feel Flat good. I still feel good about the there. stock, no matter what. I mean, it's at a, a low level. It's what I think it's one of the best fitness tools that are out there. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. They they nailed the whole community aspect of it. It's just like they they pay attention to the things that you really need to pay attention to. Mm-hmm, so. mm-hmm. Speaking of stock, um, you know that the Smith and Wesson stock is it, it keeps going up, and so do other gun stocks. So I know we've been talking about how gun sales have gone through the roof. I have some numbers. Uh-oh. You want to hear how crazy this yeah, is? Yeah, yeah right. actually. We'll so see. they they estimate that about three million more firearms were sold between March and June in the U.S. than wow. typical wow. months. So not so the normal amount plus an additional Dude. three million. We are an armed nation. Yeah, and yeah. and the other and the statistics show that about forty percent of those those sales. Uh, are new gun owners, which mm-hmm. is almost double what it normally would be. And it, of those new gun owners, a big chunk of them are women. Speaking of gun, did sure. you guys ever hear what happened to the you know the couple in St. Louis that came out and they're do you do you know what happened to them? Yeah, what happened to them? I heard the okay. You you tell me because I I don't know all the details. So the, the I think it was the district attorney had their 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 rifle seized. 
Yeah, like they went in and investigated their house, right? Uh, yeah, took so their gun. They're both they they're both husband and wife are lawyers. They, they are. Okay. They are. So they went in, took their rifle, their gun, which without uh, due process, that's a- All sounds unconstitutional. Very, right? yeah, that's a huge infringement. That's cr- and being lawyers, I would think they would never be able to get away with that. Well, oh, yeah. they got their gun back because I believe the Should governor- a counter suit, for I think, sure. Yeah, I think the governor stepped in and said, no, you can't do that. And I think they got their gun back. Oh, okay. So this may turn into a big like national legal battle to watch. To see. That's what I'm curious. Yeah. I had I'd heard some things that happened, but I wasn't yeah. sure of the story. And why? Way. Yeah. Why would that even be under question? You know what? The whole story wasn't even told um, in the in the media. The media made it look like people were in the street outside their house and hear those crazy people with guns. That's not what happened. The whole thing is their property. So yeah. they have a massive property, right? And, they, and it's gated, right? And supposedly yeah. they were the 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 all the you know, picketers were on their way or uh, on their way to um, the governor's house, right? Isn't the, that what they or were the doing? Mayor. Is that what it was? I think oh, so. Was but so here's what happened: so their whole property has a big gate around it, big metal gate. The protesters uh, broke through the gate, wow. so then they were on their property mm-hmm. when they were doing that. And he apparently heard them saying some pretty scary stuff, and that's when they came out. With their guns or whatever. Now, here's the other thing I'd like to say: they need to fi- they need to practice like uh, you know trigger safety. I mean, the wife was walking around with her <laughs> hand on the on the trigger the whole time. Like, oh, oh man, if man. that goes off, yeah, right, this is gonna be a bad thing. But they were the people broke into their property to begin with. They were not in the street at off their property the whole time. So that, yeah. and the, the media didn't cover that. What are, part. And what is St. Louis laws like that with someone coming on your property once they're on there? I mean, do they still they still have to commit some sort of violence towards right, them? Right, cuz it's state by state, it's different, right? Yeah, I don't I think they're okay because they didn't shoot anybody. They just had their guns yeah. and it was on their property. Yeah. So they're just holding their ground. Yeah, I don't think they I, I know, but what I, and, that, and what's interesting to me or what's I I would what happens or what can they at what point can they defend themselves like is it after somebody if someone like someone let's say they had bats or they had something and they were coming towards them do they do they have the ability to or do they have right. to wait till they get struck by a bat yeah, before or do they, they have to have guns for them to then pursue right it, it depends so, I on the state I, yeah. don't, I don't know what the law i know in california and if somebody's in your home unless your life is being threatened you can't shoot them. Yeah, I know that there's been like situations yeah. where someone's broken into someone's home and, and then, then they sued, sued them. I, yeah, for getting shot or whatever. It's completely yeah. absurd. And but. then in other states, if they just set one foot on your property, you could blast them and then. Right. Yeah. Your, That's why I'm wondering protected. what St. Louis is. Yeah, I don't know. I, I definitely fall on the side of if you, because I have kids, and yeah. if I see somebody in my house, it's a real um, threat, you know. And I'm not not saying I'm going to shoot first, but uh, if if, oh, if it I looks am. bad, I'm going to shoot you in your fucking kneecap for sure. Maybe, and I'll right? I'll take the risk of going to jail over that than my kids being my kid being fucking. Well, hurt. you don't know, you know right? Yeah, yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. If someone yeah. breaks into my house. Okay, I'm going to shoot you in the kneecap. You know, if, I may not shoot to kill because I'm not sure what's going on, mm, yeah. but you have no business being in my house without I, fucking well, knocking. Well, and we live in a text fucking world. You could text me before you come in my house. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. If, you do, if I didn't get a text and you're in my house, that's you get shot in the kneecap. Well, if I, yeah. I, if, I mean, if uh, if people are are if outside my, or in my home on my property and they look violent and they're protesters and they're yelling crazy stuff, I would have been out there too. Well, you know what I mean? Being like, okay, what do I? I would, I'm sure I would have been scared for my life. Yeah. You see all these people out there. What are you going to do? You know. Yeah. So I'm more on that side. First question is from Grant Satterthwaite. What are some of your favorite landmine attachment exercises? Oh, the landmine. That's a great piece of home gym equipment, yeah. isn't it? So for the listeners who don't know, the landmine, you can you typically will anchor it on some weight plates, and then it's, it's something you can put a barbell in, and then it moves in any direction. So one yeah. end of the barbell is anchored at the bottom and the other parts kind of And they of have attachments up. too for squat racks now, which are, are pretty convenient where you could just put it at the bottom part of the squat rack. But I mean, there's some great exercises you can do, especially with rotational work. I mean, there's not a whole lot of options for rotational exercises in general. And I feel like this is one of those that provides, uh, you know, a great option for that. But one of my favorites actually 
is, uh, you know, when there's somebody with limited range of motion with their shoulder to, to get in a kneeling press, uh, because you're, you're, you're pushing it almost on, on track where it's a bit in front of you. So you don't really need, um, you know, to, to be able to stabilize completely up over your head. Uh, so, I mean, that's a good option to at least, you know, start building strength in the right direction. And that's something I like to do. With didn't, it. didn't you and Danny both do a whole series on our YouTube channel? I I, so. I didn't, but uh, no, 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 Justin, yeah, and, oh, Justin oh. and Danny. Yeah, I did. I did a few of them. Um, yeah, on, yeah, some rotational exercises. Ju and Danny did a whole series also. So if yeah. you haven't been, I, and we get stuff like this all the time. I mean, people, uh, when you when you uh, drop questions, like one of the first things you, you should do is uh, go well to two things. One, use the Mind Pump Media app where you can search a topic. So if you want to hear us talk about a topic, uh, there's a good chance we've talked about it already. And then if you want to watch or see something related, especially when it's exercise related, there's a good chance that we've already done a video or multiple videos on it on Mind Pump TV on YouTube channel. So, mm -hmm. and I remember Danny did a whole series and I thought you had done some also. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then Matt's performance has, uh, man, I tell you the, the reverse lunge to the presses. Oh yeah. Yeah. Those are, those are I get, brutal. I get messages about that all the time still. And that was one of my favorites just to get like a full, full body experience. Uh, you're going to get all of it. there. It, well, it's such a good, it's such a great movement though. I mean, it's, that's what's, I, it was one of the exercises that I really appreciated in performance uh, after going through it, going like, man, those are challenging to perform them with really good form. I mean, not only are they, they exhausting to do, but if you're doing a uni, unilateral exercise, so the, the stability portion of that with the shoulder press, uh, that for sure one of my favorite moves in that program. I'll say this. Um, if you have a home gym, uh, aside from barbell, dumbbells, adjustable bench, and a rack, the next most important piece of equipment you can get is a landmine, number one, because it's very inexpensive. Number two, it takes up almost no space. And number three, the variety of exercises that you could do with a landmine are tremendous. You could do so many exercises. Now, one of my favorites, uh, besides the rotational, I like the rotational movements because you can't really do those uh, any other way. Maybe cables allow you to do that, but with free weights, it's kind of tough. Um, but I like good old-fashioned rowing exercises with a landmine. I love T-bar rows, one-arm rows. I like single leg uh, deadlift is awesome on that. Single leg mm -hmm. deadlift yeah. or a rear delt row uh, on a, on a landmine. I mean, it's 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 a phenomenal hypertrophy bodybuilding tools, but not just a uh, like an athletic tool. It's also great for just pure hypertrophy muscle building. Yeah, I don't know what they call it, but it's like a transfer press where you're basically lined up sideways and you row and then you grab with the other arm and press as you rotate with oh, it. Yeah. So it's just very like high functional, you know, very athletic versatile. type. Yeah, movements are great. Next question is from Jazz Fitness. Can you discuss when supersets are appropriate and when they are not? Some people suggest they are only suitable for antagonist muscles. What is your approach to programming? Okay, so first I'd like to start with the easy part, which is who supersets are not for. Um, who supersets, people who are uh, overly stressed, whose bodies are very, very sensitive to lots of intensity, maybe people who already train a lot with a lot of circuits, mm -hmm. uh, you, know, uh, you know, that style of training, a superset, probably not going to be good for you. In fact, you need to transition away from doing exercises without rest in between sets. You want to do maybe more standard strength training. So like if I took a client who is doing lots of HIIT training, lots of circuit training, you know, overly stressed, under eating, um, that person would not be the person I would do supersets to. Um, now, as far as who they're appropriate for, supersets are great when they're programmed properly. And it's usually when you're transitioning from a traditional strength training, you know, straight set type routine. Mm -hmm. Then you go into the superset type stuff and <laughs> supersets are phenomenal oh, for yeah. the pump. Mm -hmm. They really maximize the pump in ways that other, you know, combos of exercises don't seem to do. They were favorites. Uh, it's a favorite tool of bodybuilders. Um, I know in the seventies, bodybuilders did lots of supersets leading up to competition because it would enhance the pump, have them, you know, be able to to, to uh, have more stamina when they're posing on stage. Um, and there's a million and one different ways to, you know, to apply. Well, this is uh, as far as asking us about our programming on it. I mean, if you have our programs, this we introduce that into Maps Aesthetic. 
Phase three. That's I the think. first time that we introduce it, right? Yeah. So no, no, no. It's it in, it's in an anabolic, anabolic too. Yeah. Oh, what part is it in anabolic? Phase three. three. Oh, phase three. It isn't. Yeah. That's yeah. right. You're yeah. right. There isn't. So I mean, that's just it. It should follow that 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 process, right? We do straight sets, you know, and you're doing heavy heavy five six repetitions in the first phase. Then you go to the second phase where we're moving to more like ten to twelve reps. And then when you start getting into the you know, 15, 20 reps. Like this is where supersets make yeah. sense because you're chasing, you're chasing more volume. You're chasing more reps. It makes sense. You're shortening rest periods a lot of times. So this is make, this is where it makes sense to be programmed. But no matter what, if you, if you do this, it's ideal, just like anything else to be kind of sticking with it for about four, six weeks tops. Mm -hmm. And then you want to move out of it. It's a great tool that just like many other things we talk about on this show, but where the people that shouldn't be doing are the ones that tend to gravitate towards it. I, I remember getting clients that the abusers. Yeah, that that's how they trained. It was yeah. it was like a circuit just living always, it. Yeah, always back to back to back to back, or even like tri setting where they're kind of they're going three extra like little yeah. mini little mini circuits the whole entire well, it's workout. It's funny you bring that up because I really didn't even do supersets until I mean we we did some things like twenty ones and whatnot, where it's like you know you're you're doing kind of like exercises back to back to back, but uh, I never really did the programming of it until I actually started working out at 24 Hour Fitness and then Adam was my manager at the time and was starting to take me from, you know, this now do this one real quick and it just fucking blew me up. Like mm -hmm. my, my, I remember especially on the chest exercises, I, I felt like I like mastered everything in terms of like, like bench pressing and then going from like a bench press and then doing a flyer, like multiple push ups right after that was just like so exhaustive, so new. Like I, it would just get to a point where I couldn't even move. Like my arms were so stiff and my chest was so stiff and it, it just had like great benefit, but it's, it's really because I, I didn't do that at all. Like right. I, I just, I didn't do that. That was something that was a new stimulus. And so it, it definitely, it serves your body and then you can adapt to it, but then you need to move on. Yeah. So the, the re so when you do supersets for antagonistic muscle groups, meaning, you know, like chest and back or biceps and triceps, the value of that, especially for the large muscle groups is it tends to help with form and function. So if I did like a good row and then went to a bench press. Did you say function? Function. Yeah. You hit that. <laughs> yeah. that was that Freudian slip? Ooh, function. Uh, it helps you with your posture. It helps you connect to the back muscles as you're pressing, you know, that type of deal. Mm -hmm. For the same muscle group, so like if you're doing like one chest exercise to another chest exercise or one back exercise to another back exercise, I like to combine a compound with a single joint movement. So compound and isolation. And you can do them you know, one before the other or flip them. So there's different benefits to both. Either pre-exhaust a muscle with an isolation movement, move into a compound, or do the flip, do the heavy compound movement, then move to the isolation to really squeeze more blood in the muscle. Those are really my three favorite ways to, to use supersets. Next question is from Fat Husband. <laughs> <laughs> Great handle. I like this guy. He's a good guy. What's one thing from the 90s era, era fitness that you wish was still around today, and why is it Ultimate Orange? <laughs> Ultimate Orange. <laughs> Ultimate Orange, well, For people who don't know, Ultimate Orange is the first real pre-workout uh, supplement. They really were the first supplement that kind of introduced something into that class or market. And what Ultimate Orange was, was caffeine, ephedra, and aspirin. It was the old ECA so crazy. stack. Um, now I can you I, still get a hold of that somewhere? I like the you can get a Fedra, but you have to get it. Yeah, as I mean a, Ultimate Orange itself. Can not, you still not get the it? real one? No, you, I, wonder, I wonder if we could call Rich up and get like a little hookup. You know like a, yeah, 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 a little underground he's Ultimate. Still got orange. it in Mexico I mean, come somewhere. on, he's got to have yeah. like fucking jugs of it somewhere yeah. laying around. Well, so here's the deal: like a Fedra is illegal now to be sold unless it's sold as a bronchodilator. So you can still get a Fedra, but you get it combined with uh, a guaifenesin or something like that. It's a compound for for your lungs because it is a Bronco dilator. So you can still get it. I used to love this stuff back in the day. I think I abused it to be quite honest. Yeah. Uh, this was back, you know, I would take uh, rip fuel and rip force speed and, stacks and speed that. stacks and ephedra, caffeine and aspirin. They make you feel like you're on drugs. 
uh, you know, you're, you are, you are, you're, <laughs> that's why it's, dude, it's weird how it feels. That you're way. fast. Yeah. You're talking fast. You're so what are you bringing fast. back? What are you bringing back from the nineties? Oh, hear. you know what? I'll, okay. So let's start, let's start with I the know exercise. What I, I know I want to bring back. Uh, no, you first. Mm, yeah. I, I want to bring know. back uh, MC hammer pants. <laughs> yeah. I you love can't those, touch dude. I love those pants. To work out anymore? All around. I want to wear them too. I had some of those. They're it's like Zubaz, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it had like these uh, uh, fish bones on it. I they, remember it vividly. I had a pair that like uh, they Velcroed in. You know what I'm saying? Like you, uh, you, you just you opened them up like this to get in and out of them. Yeah. And then when <laughs> you when you close them, you just Velcroed it in. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, dude. It looked like you took a crap. Hell, hella legit. <laughs> yeah, super easy to get in and out. Too legit to quit. Yeah. Bring back the MC Hammer pants. I um. Sweet. I, you know, okay, so I'll talk exercises. There. So this is funny. I've been doing this for so long. I see exercises fall into favor and out of favor you know it was really in favor in the 90s at least for the bodybuilding community hmm. behind the neck exercises oh, yeah. behind the neck pull downs was a big deal and behind the neck shoulder presses uh, was a big deal and they fell out of favor um and that's too bad uh because i think that they have real value now of course you got to have good pull-ups too you got yeah all yeah. that stuff i mean shit in the in the 80s and 90s you know you had rocky doing you know behind the neck remember that that scene from rocky Four? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know i showed jessica for the first time that that uh, whole that whole scene the whole montage <laughs> where he's working out in the cabin dude we were driving home and those sit ups on the bus, on the bus, on the bus. and she plays Eye of the Tiger, right? And I'm like, oh, it's weird how this always gives me the chills when I listen to it. And I'm like, wait a minute. I'm like, have you heard the soundtrack to Rocky IV? The the you know the, the montage of his training. And so then we listen to that, and then I'm and she didn't like get it, you know? Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, okay, you need to watch the clip. Yeah. So I got home and I showed, she still didn't get it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I want to bring still back is everybody that thought they knew karate. Yeah, <laughs> everybody in the nineties thought they knew karate. Yeah. Like, ah, like, like you just that's because the Karate Kid, dude. Yeah, that's what it did. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. Cobra Kai and, and everybody else. Like now, everybody's like, oh, dude, totally, dude, jujitsu, bro. Yeah, I, jiu I have a, I have a serious one for you for exercise. How about barefoot squatting? That was a big. Was that in the nineties though? Yeah, it was nineties. Well, I don't you, remember seeing anybody barefoot. In the was it eighties? That's like seventies, bro. Is that's like it? Arnold did that. Oh, then maybe eighties. Yeah, maybe mm. a little bit of eighties. Uh, okay, so yeah. that's something that hasn't been. I mean, it, it's barely. It's like popular, like with the the, the functional community, yeah. uh, but not the general population. I got one for you. Mm. Uh, Atomics shoes to work out in. Remember, remember the, 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 the bodybuilder? Oh, dude, look them up, Doug. Come You'll on. recognize them right away. Okay. Oh, yeah, I don't write they, They're like the white, like kind of high tops. All the bodybuilders wore them in the 90s. And at 100%, if you see them, you're going to remember. I felt it. like I, I saw a lot more singlets back then. In the gym. And they would lift weights in singlets. Right? Like yeah. with like, like AC Slater. Yeah. I am you know, not everybody want to be AC Slater. lifting weights in something that's that tight on yeah, my stuff. Yeah, right? You just, oh, yeah, you're then you're just gonna, pointing out. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's like, no one um, wants to see that. But the behind the neck exercises that I was talking about, they do require good shoulder stability, good mobility. You have to have a, oh, a certain level ugly. of functionality. Do you see them? Yeah. Uh, but uh, but if you have those things, um, those movements have some real value. I still to this day do behind the neck presses at least once a week. I love the way they make my yeah. shoulders yeah. you know feel. Well, I think it's one of those things that like I remember I had to spend like I don't know maybe a year of working on that. I, I was doing just the bar for mm -hmm. a long time because I didn't have the mobility. So I think that, I think it's a, uh, you know, we talk about like the, the skill of squatting, right? Like just because you can't do it very well, doesn't mean that you should just avoid it. You should work towards being able to do it. I feel the same way about behind the neck exercises. There's a lot of people. In fact, a majority of people listening right now can probably not perform a behind the neck shoulder not press. Not safely. Yeah, not safely. So that doesn't mean because you can't do that that you just say, "Oh, I can never do this." It's like, okay, that should be a good. That's a good goal. And we always talk about how do you stay like motivated to train and exercise. This is another example of that. Like, it can get really boring always chasing building muscle, burning body fat, building muscle, burning body fat, looking a certain certain way all the time. Like this is how I like I would take clients on like like hey, our goal for the next 2-3 months is to work on you being able to perform this exercise. Mm -hmm. This is really good for shoulder health. You can't do it right now, so our main focus is going to be that. And then you start programming all these mobility drills and and you and the way you test that is the behind the neck press. And the goal is to be able to do that. And then when you get to see yourself be able to do it and then actually progress with load, it's a really cool accomplishment. And what it does for the body is incredible. Absolutely. All right. Doug's having trouble uh, with the internet again, but I'm going to pull up. <laughs> I'm going to pull these shoes up for you, Adam. Constant battle. You need to see. I, this... I know. I want to see if I've seen them before. Oh, 100%, dude. You, you'll remember these, these words. I kind of feel like I've seen. Do you remember the guy? At, uh, oh, yeah. 
Yeah, and they would wear them with the big pants. Those like, are back in style. Uh, they never left. I okay, guess. yeah, because look, some look up a company called uh, Rider shells. Rider Shoes. R R Y D E R is a company that ma- that's all they do is make those. Is to make those kind. Yeah, of yeah. Shoes. Look at look at uh, Rider weightlifting oh, shoes. Oh yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. They, they they copy the. Did the, you pull them up? Yeah, I did. Yeah, exactly. No, bro, the Atomic shoes. That was what bodybuilders wore. In the 90s, 100%. They would be different colors. Yeah, they're super popular in the uh, Instagram men's physique and bodybuilding world. Like that, they sponsor all the all of my peers. Yeah, I don't get that. Like like special weight, like shoes to work out or whatever. Well, I don't, I mean, I don't, unless I mean, you're like a like an Olympic lifter. Yeah. You know, otherwise you're doing something impressive. Just wear your chucks. Yeah. Next question is from Junior G Fit. With schools getting ready to go back, how do each of you feel about sending your kids back to school? Will you or won't you? Also, how do you handle this situation if you and your spouse have very different feelings and opinions about it? Wow, imagine Man. being married imagine being married to somebody who like totally has a different view on I didn't even think about that. Like yeah, I have yeah. different views than my some friends, which that's it presents its own challenges. You know, like we were all mm-hmm. sitting around like we have very different this was this weekend we're all together and 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 one of the three friends is like super hardcore left mm-hmm. and you know it presents itself with challenges with conversations now we all tease each other and have now fun you guys are adults about it right right yeah. and have fun about it but i mean if i lived in the same house as him all the time and like every issue was like that that would be really challenging to to do that i can't do you guys have any friends that are have have spouses that are completely like polar opposite views on things like that yeah sometimes i think mm. it's that's going to happen um with something at some point you're not going to have the same view as your spouse that's why you have to learn how to compromise that's right. like the big thing about uh, being married actually is learning how to do that because you're going to feel very strongly about something. She's going to feel very strongly. Mm -hmm. As far as the school thing is concerned, like these are the latest statistics or the latest numbers. Okay. Here we are in California, right? California has got uh, the second highest amount of, of confirmed coronavirus cases right now in the country. Is that to Florida? And they're, and they're growing. No, Florida's not number one, but they're growing very rapidly. New York was number one, but California's probably going to catch up here pretty soon. We still, as of the recording of this podcast, not one child has died mm. uh, from COVID. The statistically speaking, the the death rate from COVID for kids is so small it's hard to cal- calculate. You're speaking as as California. Just I'm talking about the whole the whole world. It's so we haven't had a single kid die. No, in California we have. That's why I just asked. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. I, mean, I thought you meant the statistic. Okay, yeah, yeah. No, kids have died from it, but it's such a small percentage. Um, the flu for kids is much riskier um, than than COVID is. Not saying that there aren't kids that are going to suffer from it. You know, if somebody's listening and they know somebody that really really sucks, but the risk is uh, is super low. So, but now that now what they say is it's not about the kids; it's about the kids getting it and then bringing it home to grandma. In which case I say, yeah, you should definitely be careful around people who are higher risk. The other part that I, I think we need to look at is we're not considering all the other health effects yeah. of some of these policies. Um, okay, fine. You're worried about coronavirus, so no kids go to school. These are developmental years. They're not being around friends. They're not yeah. leaving the house. Formative years. They're 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 locked in the house. Like, that's not healthy for a kid. No. I, I feel, and considering the low death rate of, of coronavirus, uh, and I, I think you're you're it's more risky to force your kids to stay at home than it is to send them to school. That's my personal opinion. I'm not an infectious disease expert, but right. uh, that's my my well, personal opinion. It, here in California, I mean, it just came out, right? So California is no no go this year at all. No, well, not so. this year, uh, the fall or the whatever. Fall, yeah, the, the well, start that's this year. year. Yeah, basically the, start of the first yeah, yeah. few months. They don't. Is yeah, what we got so far. Which yeah. who knows? I'm sure they'll they'll lock it down the rest of the you know after that. But yeah, I, I, I'm kind of with you. So I'm just like I'm really sad for the kids that they have to now take on all these fears and everybody else's like hysteria. Uh, you know, during their most formative years of where they're supposed to be, you, you know, just focusing on what they need to focus on, which is getting educated, you know, having community, hanging out with their friends. Uh, and so it's frustrating for me uh, being like I, I wasn't considering staying at home and like doing, uh, you know, at home uh, education. But now it definitely is something that makes sense. And so you mean like pulling them out of the school? pulling them out of school? Like what what is the point of, of putting them in a situation where everybody 
is so uh, hysterical about the way that they're handling uh, objects. They're rubbing everything down with sanitizer. And, uh, you know, we didn't get any of this from the flu. Like, this mm-hmm. is just some, if you were sick, you stayed home. And then, and, and that was it. And, and so, you know, I just, I don't understand this. This isn't, to me, this just doesn't resonate with the way that I think about our body's immune system and being able to then, you know, overcome like these potential diseases that come our way. So it has honestly, like I, I can't understand it. Obviously this is, you know, their reaction to trying to slow, you know, something that's spreading. But for me, uh, it, to me, I, I think it makes more sense to keep them home, like keep it in a safe environment, bring people in that can educate them to help. Uh, so we're looking at those options right now. Well, not to mention that Sal talks about the unintended consequences. What about the, you know, play is a big part of school too. Mm-hmm. How many, and you guys, now you guys are fitness people with parents. So you guys are probably trying to insert, you know, activities and things to keep your kids active. But if how many people in America are doing that right now? How many people are making sure that if your kid was playing at recess for 45 minutes to an hour every single day, plus whatever breaks they have and what it looks like for them and sports that they might have been playing, right. now they're not doing any of that anymore. Are you making sure as a parent to do that? And what role does that play in it's, their health? It's more totally. than that. It's more than that. It's not just the activity. It's the activity with other kids. Right, right. Interaction. That, yeah, that's a huge... That is a huge part of no, a child's you, development. That's a good point because yeah. that was something that remember we were talking. I don't know if we shared this on air or not, but you know we were having this discussion, you know, about raising our kids in this time with tech, right? And I was, you know, Sal and Justin were talking about how challenging like it is to you know feel like you're constantly telling your kid no, you can't have that, and you don't want to be a tyrant about it. And I was like, come on, dude, are you really? Is it really that big of a deal? Like I remember playing video games with my friends all day long some days. And, you know, they're on vacation with us. Why don't you let that? And he goes, listen, if I, and this was Sal's response to me, is that if my son was playing with two or three of his friends, I wouldn't have a problem with it. But they're on, it's not, he's by himself Mm -hmm. staring at a screen all day long. He's not truly interacting socially with his friends and they're all playing together. He's just staring at a TV screen with some headphones on. And I was like, it's not a real interaction that, that fulfills, you know, that sort of need that they have to, to connect with another human being, you know, like these virtual things are not fulfilling that need we all have as human beings. And so we have to just kind of like fend for ourselves. That's where I feel like we're at right now because, you know, the government is not going to provide that for us. That's fine. No, the medical community, the, the, the child health experts are saying, open the schools up. They're saying the risk of, of, of death yeah. with kids or serious complications from coronavirus for children is super, super low. The dangers of them not going to school are higher because, again, these are crucial developmental years. Look, above all else, humans are extremely social. This is what makes – one of the things that makes humans unique is we're extremely social animals. We have very complex societies. It is, it's actually deemed torture to isolate somebody. If, if you capture them in war, it's, a, it's against the Geneva Convention. Here's what we're doing with kids. Don't go to school. Stay at home all day long. Holy shit. Okay, yeah. You, okay, maybe we, we lower the risk of, of, of spreading a disease a little bit. But what are the the other sides of that consequence? Well, here let me let me uh, or let the me, consequence, let me throw the let me throw the other side to this right. So this was a discussion this weekend, and I told you my friends on the the other side, far left. He's also a principal to high school. So he goes, the fear is not the kids. The teachers. Exactly. He says the fear is that the the schools, first of all, are not structured in a way to like manage this. He goes, not manageable. He goes, the amount of kids that are coming in and out of these these, these classrooms, the things they're touching and grabbing and, and sharing amongst each other is, he goes, the, just managing, keeping all that stuff clean and not them spreading it to the teachers. Mm-hmm. And then also even having to manage the teachers. He goes, you know, I already see what I'm going to have to do. And he goes, it's gonna, I'm going to have yeah. to be the asshole who comes in the teacher break room and the four teachers are sitting around having coffee together and I'm going to have to go, what the fuck are you guys doing? Yeah, they're never going to be able to manage it. And so he's like- Any of these diseases. He's like, it's not about a, the kids dying from this. It's that them being carriers to the then teachers who then the teachers go off and carry it to other people. Mm-hmm. He goes, that is the greatest challenge that I'm going to have yeah, to deal with. He I goes, know my I'm- whole job is going to change from being an educator to being this guy who is constantly monitoring health safety. Well, okay. it's ripe for disruption. Yeah, it is. And look, I- Well, that's what I think, too. I, yeah. I heard that, but look, in places where schools have been reopened, there is no evidence that it so spreads that, the virus so that's, more? So that's not true. Mm-hmm. He, he told me that they're they're tracing back, oh, God, I wish what country it was, and they're saying that the main reason why their, their outbreak, they're tracing it back, was because they opened up schools again. 
I wish I remember what country it was, so I could so I could well, quote I know, it better. I know. I think it was Sweden. It's did not. not do, it's not Sweden. Well, Sweden it did wasn't fully open, and you compare it to other countries, and it's kind of the same. Maybe Doug can Google. I don't know how you're looking for country opened up blames. You okay, know, but here, school, school he, up here's my argument. Okay, my argument is not that it's not going to spread more coronavirus. My argument is. What are the unintended consequences, and are those going to be worse? Well, you know me. I know yeah. you know I agree with you, but I'm playing. I'm what I'm doing right now is there's there's, there's about 45 percent people right yeah. now that are listening to this conversation that are going, bruh, 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 bruh. Oh, and I'm gonna, I'm going to yeah. play that bruh, 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 oh. for you. Yeah, okay? no, that's good. This is what this is because this is my 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 best friend who is a vice or, or a principal of a school. He's on that side of it where he's like. It's gonna be it's gonna be a nightmare. If we open schools up, you're gonna see well, this it's thing. Either live go, under a rock, you know, the rest of your life, or deal with the fact that you're there's people that have gotten sick and gotten better. No, did we forget about that? Yeah, we really forgot about that. Yeah. Now we need everybody's protection for every step of every fucking thing that we do from here on out. Fuck you. Yeah. yeah. Oh God. <laughs> I'm Justin, done. Justin just gave me a. Erection. I love it when you get angry. No, I I I, I agree. I think um, I think this these measures are being uh, managed or should I say led by w one class of expert, which is the infectious disease expert, and that's they should definitely be in that conversation. But they are not including psychologists uh, in that. They're not including economists in that. They're not including. Um, you know, they're not including everybody. Let's look at the whole picture. No, I love that. That's a great. That's a great, great point right there. Because that's what ends up happening is that this turns into just a what's a healthier thing, and there, there's no debate there. Would yeah, it be? Will there be more infections? Because here's the thing. Yeah. I will agree to this. It would the, for health reasons. The safest thing we could all do is go lock ourselves in our rooms for the next fucking two years. From an, just from the infection yeah, standpoint. Right. Yeah. And no one can argue that. Now, but that's we'll, a that is a fact. These sure. but let's think about how and, that, and I, I like about to, your health being I like to take that, that extreme to get people that this that's how I used to teach fitness, right? With the yes. extreme analogies. I tell people like that came in, they say, Hey, Adam, I want to lose thirty pounds as fast as I can. I say, Okay, if you want to lose thirty pounds as fast as you can, stop eating, come in here every day and see me. We're gonna run on the treadmill for an hour. Mm -hmm. Now you laugh and you think that's ridiculous. Ridiculous, but that's the extreme to get them to understand this is not the way. This is not the best way for us to do it. There's other factors we have to think about. Mm -hmm. The same thing goes for this argument is, yeah, no shit. Wearing masks all the time, shutting schools down, all of us isolating would be the safest thing for this country. Mm -hmm. No shit. But we're not thinking about all the other things. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're not talking about the suicide rates going through the roof, depression going through the roof, domestic violence going through the roof. What's going on with our kids that are not going to be socialized for an entire year? There are other factors that you have to take into consideration that we're just not. They're not. And look, okay, I'll give you another example. Okay, we're in the fitness space, so I'll go with this one. So every year, at least 2.8 to 3 million people die every year from obesity. Okay, that's a fact. Every single year. Now, from an obesity standpoint, would we save lives if we all of a sudden restricted everybody's food, everybody was on rations, and we eliminated all unhealthy foods, and everybody was required by law to exercise? If you don't exercise, you get fined or thrown to jail. Will we reduce the deaths of obesity? Yes, we will. Dramatically. Is that, that going to be a good thing for our health? No, it won't. Health is a sphere. It's not just how many infections we get. It's also the psychology, your psycho psychological state has to do with your health. Your family uh, has to do with your health. The relationships you have, how you learn to socialize with people, how you communicate with people, your develop, how you develop, your how you handle money is a part of your yeah. health. And they're not considering any of that. All they're looking at is the scary shit, which is the infections, and they're not considering anything else. And I, my point is this. You, take ki you t tell kids they can't go to school Will you lower infection rate? Probably. Will you cause other consequences that may be worse than that? Also, probably. I I I think so, and nobody's considering that. So that's just you know, and that's from a a, a personal trainer, fitness podcast host standpoint. So take it, <laughs> uh, take it for what it's worth. Um, look, Mind Pump records on video as well as audio. Come watch us on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find us on Instagram. That really, really awesome rant from Justin. Uh, <laughs> let him know what you th how, how yeah, awesome bring he is. It. Save, bring it. save that clip and share it from YouTube. Go, go to go to Instagram, Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal. I'm Adam, down here. Adam at Mind Pump Adam. I am, if I am not a fully present father, if I am not a leader, if I'm not the king of my household, then it's it, it's going to show my children 
the example of the father that a Greenfield father is, and then they go forth and do probably something very similar to what I did. 